Gaining Kublai Khan's approval was the turning point in young Marco's life. Henceforth, he would emerge from the shadow of his elders and emerge as a man on his own. With its lively, adventurous disposition, it fits perfectly with the empire. So Kublai Khan, the greatest ruler on earth, saw hope in this western boy with a sharp mind. Under the influence of the great Khan, Marco began to transform into a traveler to be remembered in history. Kublai Khan, who gave duties and responsibilities to foreigners in the administration of his empire, gradually became the least Mongolian ruler among the Mongols. The Mongols often accused him of abandoning Mongolian habits and becoming fully Chinese. He assigned duties to Uyghurs, Muslims and Nestorian Christians, as well as Chinese, in various duties of the state. Kublai even gave his second son and crown prince the Chinese name Zhenjin. In other words, giving a state duty to a foreigner like Marco Polo was a frequent situation in the reign of Kublai Khan. Marco would serve this great Khan for 17 years. The Khan would give him posts such as embassy and tax collector, and he used Marco's unique powers of observation and insights on his people and country. In the Asian part of his work, Marco tells about his observations about China during his service to Kublai Khan and conveys what he heard about some important events during that time, even though he was not a witness to the events. Kublai Khan's wealth surprised Marco. According to him, Kublai Khan is the most powerful emperor of the whole world. This observation by Marco can be verified historically. According to Marco's account, the food and drink, the clothes distributed, the pearls and various jewelry in the feasts and banquets organized by Kublai Khan every year on certain days are incalculable. In addition, Kublai was a very generous ruler to his people. The social state of the Mongols, like other aspects of their rule, was very well organized. Families who were harmed and in a difficult situation would report their situation to the officials appointed for this purpose. In this way, the state would provide food and clothing aid to these families. All this perfect welfare state system, power and Kublai Khan's charisma had fascinated Marco with Kublai. But over the years, that fascination would fade as Marco learned of the ways in which the previous emperors of China ruled the state. For example, before Kublai Khan conquered the Song Empire, Emperor Duzong developed an advanced orphanage system in addition to doing what Kublai Khan did. In Emperor Duzong's state, he would take away the families who did not take care of their children and give these children to them if there was a wealthy family without children. If there was a child who was not wanted to be adopted by any family, those children would be taught a profession, and their expenses would be covered by the state until they got married. Years passed, Marco Polo was traveling through Asia as Kublai Khan's ambassador or tax collector. The intimacy between him and the Khan angered the lords of the Khan, so Polo turned into an enviable figure. Kublai Khan was getting old. He launched two unsuccessful military campaigns against Japan in a row. These failures shattered the Mongols' sense of invincibility, a tool of great fear, over their rivals. This failure and the death of his son Jinjin and his wife Chabi psychologically devastated Khan. Upon this, Khan learned that the finance minister Ahmed, whom he trusted very much, was actually an unreliable person. Ahmed was a murderer who had taken bribes and sold civil service for years and raped many women because of his sexual addiction. The people, fed up with this person, rebelled one day and assassinated Ahmed. Realizing what he had done after Ahmet died, Khan had Ahmet's corpse taken out by dogs, but what does it matter? According to official records, 714 people appointed by Ahmet as civil servants by taking bribes were dismissed. All these events had worn out Khan's psychological state, which was not good, and Khan tried to solve his problems by eating too much food and drinking alcohol. Oh, my God.